want to just map out after 30 years of being a transformational leader myself, uh, I'm 61 and I'm kind of moving into mentoring level uh, rather than being a practitioner. My focus is on training practitioners now and mentoring people to go out in the world and make a much bigger difference than I could make by myself. And so I have put together these nine steps, which is in three groups, which I'm going to show you in a second, uh, which lines up with the core clearing breathwork coach training. So in my experience, most of the people on these sessions are empaths. They're caring, heart-centered people. And I see there are three major challenges that empaths have when they're working in service. They, they get tired and burnt out from giving too much and not taking enough. And so the shift is to be at your best. So if you want to be a transformational leader, you need to constantly supercharge your energy. You need to regenerate. Otherwise, you'll just get burnt out. The second major thing that you need to be a transformational leader is create transformations. So you need to be able to facilitate breakthroughs. And we've got that covered with the breath work. And what I see with empaths and caring people is they have this desire. They want to do more. They want to help more. They want to make a bigger difference. And so often they can feel a bit stagnant, a bit unfulfilled because they want to go to the next level. Um, the third area of transformational leadership is you need to create a thriving business, right? So you could be a great healer, a great empowerment agent, but actually, if you don't know sales, marketing, and business, then you may have no clients and you might go back to a J-O-B, which you know is just over broke. So working hard, but not getting to the next level. And so you need, if you want to be a transformational leader, to focus on all three of these areas. And each area has three different pillars in it or, or steps in it. So the first one, we're gonna look at these quickly, be at your best. So as far as rating yourself between tired, drained, overwhelmed, inspired, excited, energized, out of 10, where would you put yourself at the moment? Give us a score, let me know where you're at. Yeah, so Carly's a five, Jeffrey's a five, Dan's a four, um, Della's a six, Lynn's a four, Marlon's eight, nine, and a six, seven. Yeah, so so interesting, you know, if, if you're a bit drained, if your well feels empty, you won't be able to really give your best and make the difference that you're here to make. So you, we need as caring people, not just to care for everybody else, but actually to take a bit of the pie for ourselves and care for ourselves. And so obviously we do this with breath work and majorly and just super brief, you know, breath work has been around for thousands of years with the yogis. And in the 60s, Leonard Orr brought it back into mainstream culture with rebirthing breath work. And then his buddy was Sandra Ray, who took breath work around the world with the loving relationships training that she ran in the 80s. And then Konstantin Buteko in Russia, he was a doctor, uh, he actually found that what actually creates a huge shift is the carbon dioxide level in your blood more than the oxygen level. And the guy that's picked up on that is Wim Hof, the ice man, who's got the world record for sitting in a bucket of ice for two hours. And he's really made breathwork the flavor of the month and inspired people about the potential of human performance, peak performance, peak living through um, modifying breathing patterns. And people ask me, where do we fit in in this? And I think I've given you a pretty good idea. Our particular style is heart-centered. So we use a gentle, flowing presence, focus on presence with about a 4-4 breathing tempo. And um, it's slightly different to most of the other people that are doing the breath work. And that's why I wanted to take you through this process in this session to actually get a taste for it. 
because it's hard to communicate in, in a couple of senses. The second part of being at your best is to learn to activate the flow state. And so we use what's known as a freeze framer and help people to cultivate heart coherence, which is based on heart rate variability. We have this biofeedback device that will show you how in sync your head and your heart are. And the heart centering meditation, if you've done that, actually initiates this flow state. The third piece is to really thrive in your life, you need to have balance. So you need to focus on happiness, vitality, have meaningful goals, intimate relationships with friends or partners, uh, be wealthy, uh, have a freedom lifestyle, be following your soul's purpose, there's Marlon, and be making a spiritual contribution to life on earth to help make the, the place better. So really to be at your best, I think we need to be attending to all of these eight areas. And what I've found is when we're listening to our heart, it actually keeps us in balance because it calls us to pay attention to the areas that are out of balance. So the second big pillar here on this triangle was to create breakthroughs, to be able to facilitate those. So in the area of confidence, facilitating shifts for clients quickly and gently in the range of stagnant, bored, unfulfilled to confident, inspired, excited, fulfilled. Where are you on that? So pillar two is breakthroughs. And we know one to 10 where you're at. How confident are you at helping people to shift? I'm going to show you the three steps to be able to really create breakthroughs. Lynn's a six. Awesome. Marlon's a nine. Fantastic. Dan's, Dan's a 10. Fantastic. Good on you, man. Uh, Diana's a five. Carl is seven. Jeffrey, seven. Mary, eight. Gordana, eight. Fantastic. Beautiful, guys. That's really fantastic. So what we use, as you will have it, is the power of presence, love. And heart-centered healing and transformation is all about the quality of our presence because the quality of our presence creates a field that's a catalyst for transformation to happen, Ian. And that presence activates a natural tendency to health, peace, happiness, and wholeness. So it's the quality of our presence that we want to focus on nurturing. And to do that, we have to heal our own emotional wounds first because our wounds, where we're shut down and closed, is blocking the flow of love as a channel through us in the quality of our presence. The, the second big area in creating the breakthroughs, heart center breakthroughs, is doing the core clearing issues. So helping people to get out of their heads and the busyness in their minds, come into their body, connect to the emotions, and then connect into the intuitive intelligence in our heart. Um, and so we've, we've kind of mapped that out and you journeyed on that in this session. The third piece, I think this is the third piece. I think, was, yes, the third piece it should be is about authenticity. One of the things that I love about core clearing and what I'm passionate about is empowering people to trust and follow their own truth instead of giving their power away to somebody else. And so the beautiful thing about this work is that we are guiding people to connect to their heart intelligence to listen to the feedback they're getting so that they can live an authentic life. And so I, I think that's true empowerment. That was actually pillar number three. So pillar, sorry, step three. Pillar number three then is creating a thriving business, right? So how are you, how's your confidence level between working hard and enjoying um, the freedom lifestyle? in your business from one to 10, let me know. Just shoot from the hip. Jeffrey, five, thank you. Dan, four, Carly, six, Diana, eight. Beautiful, Gordana, six. Uh, yeah, so confidence in creating a business, Marlon, which you do and you leave it. It, it funds your, your um, chocolate puddings. <laughs> Kate's a six and Lynn's a five. 
Okay, so let me tell you about the three steps that you need to master to create a thriving business. And the first one is you need a client attraction and enrollment system. So you need to be able to have a system that self-generates leads. Then you need to be able to convert those people that express interest through an enrollment session and you need to deliver something like a 10 session program, like a high ticket item that takes people on a journey and gives them the full transformation that's available. And then you need to build your business in a circular way by um, creating raving fans who then become referrals to new business. Uh, and um, you can create a business, a great business, which I did when I was only working with the breathwork in one-on-one -on -one sessions for 10 years, never did any advertising, any marketing. I just worked purely off referrals. The second pillar you need is you need this high ticket program. So you need something that's gonna bundle up what you do into a program to provide the full transformation that's possible so that you create raving fans and a profitable business. So you can do one-on-one -on -one call clearing sessions with people, but it's a hard way to make a living is finding new people to do one session with. <laughs> and so you're really not serving those people fully if you don't give them the full transformation that's available. And so it's in your interest to and your client's interest to package up and create a program that takes people on a transformational journey that works for them. And it also works for you building a business, really important. And then the third step is becoming a transformational leader, which really is about building a community around you. So I really want everyone in our community to start about thinking about building a community. And these days, the most common form for that is your Facebook group, okay? And there's a lot of interest in that um, happening at the moment. And that's, I've always had a community right from the start. We used to, I used to run a meditation group for 10, maybe more years. <laughs> um, and they were the hub. They were the hub of, of the community. They were the heart of our community. And so they, they keep um, involved in you and your work. And then their friends, when they're going through try, trying times, then they're going to refer their friends back to you for sessions and that. So really important. And this is the gro next growth step for the core clearing breathwork coaching, which a few people mentioned at the start, which is we're building out, one of the exciting things is we're building out a group core clearing um, process, including a set of meditation, breathwork meditations that I've been working on um, that you can teach in a group setting. So yeah, that's a great way to leverage your time and your energy too. Um, yeah, so happy to talk about that. Uh, uh, Kate, I know you're super keen on that, so I'm happy to have a chat. We, we can dialogue about it and even maybe we'll have a gathering about it. It'd be fun. Um, so if you if you're loving this, um, <laughs> that's it. I'm super keen goes a long way around here. Thank you. So 